So today I want to show you how we can create entirely whole new characters with the ability to animate by using Clone Bone. There are two types of Clone Bones. The first is Clone Bone Actor, which is used to create G3 characters, whereas Clone Bone Custom can be used to create monsters or robots. In fact, Clonebot Zack, me, was created using Clone Bone Custom. Just a little iClone 3 trivia for you to digest. So let's get started with Clone Bone Actor. To create a Clone Bone Actor is actually very simple. Just throw a 3D block, such as this sphere, then scale it down to the right size we want. That looks about right. Then under the Modify, go to the Attach, and then choose a parent. So let's choose the upper torso and click on the ball. And notice now our prop is no longer a prop, it is now an accessory attached to the upper torso. So let's move it into position, scale it down, scale it to the right side, there we go. And now we have an upper torso. Another method is to place the prop into the scene, attach it to any random bone on the clone bone actor, then using the drop down menu up here on the top right, where it says right thigh, now we can change it to actually to the upper torso. And then it will move the accessory to the actual clone bone that we want it to attach it to. This is also handy for when you import a model using 3DX Exchange and align the accessory to the ground. So let's do it one more time. And let's go under set. Let's go back into the props and let's throw another one in because practice makes perfect. Okay, so let's scale the box down to the right size we want. Okay, and then remember it's a prop now, but as I move to attach it to, say, the right thigh, it now becomes an accessory to the stick man, which is attached to his right thigh. Okay, so now let's move the box into position. Move it up, there we go, and now it's his right thigh. So let's do it one more time. This time we're gonna make his right hand, so let's throw another sphere in. Let's scale it down a little bit smaller because it's his right hand. All right, then let's go back to the attach attach it to his right hand by clicking on the right hand bone and then we can move the, the sphere into position I'm using mouse controls by the way let's scale the ball a little bit smaller scale the sphere there we go that's about right okay so now let's go back into the scene manager click on the stick man and I want to show you how we can actually fine tune our character by scaling the entire body so you can choose both the X Y axis and there you go you can scale them larger or smaller and also, we can throw in some animation now. So let's throw in some motion. Let's make him do, what do you say, the can-can dance, all right? So make him play. There you go, do the can-can. Very nice, very nice. Also, since our clone bone actor has a head attached to it already, we can also give him facial animation. So let's go there, add in some facial animation, and now he's asking for a date. Also, since he has a head attached already, we can also throw in a custom-made head or we can use one of the existing templates. So we can make a tray. All right, now we have a tray-headed iClone actor dancing the can-can out in some volcanic wasteland. Interesting. When talking about Clone Bone Custom, let's first get started by looking at iClone 3D Exchange. So let's open up Google 3D Warehouse and let's search for robots. So here we can see there are hundreds and hundreds of robots that different people around the world have added into the Google 3D warehouse. So let's find one that looks good, that one looks good. So let's import it into our 3D exchange. Okay, so notice that our robot is about the same size as a character would be in iClone 3. So let's align him to the ground, make the actor disappear. And here comes the most important part. We only want to export the head, so we have to deselect all the other components and body parts that belong to this model. After we do that, then we can export each body part separately. So let's deselect. Alright, so now we only have the head ready. So let's go to File, Export, and then make sure you select Accessory, and then name the head something meaningful, like Head 1. That way I can remember what it is. So let's press OK. Alright, it's exported. So let's deselect the head, and then select the next body part, like the upper torso. Okay, so you'll have to do this for every single body part. This can be tedious, but in the end it's well worth the effort. Just remember to name it something that is meaningful to you, and always to make sure that you have accessories selected. Okay, so let's press OK and export it. Alright, so let's go back to iClone 3. So here we are back in iClone 3, and remember you can always pre-scale your clone bone custom so that the model can fit your bones better, or the bones can fit your model better. 
But remember, my model was the same size as a character is, so I don't need to really to customize the bone size. So let's get started by going into accessories for actor, and let's find the body part that we want to fit in first. Ooh, where is it? Mm, there it is. All right, so let's throw in the torso. All right, there it is. And let's go under the modify tab, and notice right now it's attached to the right hand, but we don't want it attached to the right hand, we want to attach the upper torso. So click on upper torso, and there we go. So here comes the fun part, actually getting the upper torso to fit the upper torso. So we have to rotate it around, change the z-axis, get it into the right position. All right, that looks about right, so let's change our angle for the camera to see Alright, so move it back a little. I'm now using mouse controls. Okay, that looks right, but let's take a look from the front to see if it actually fits. Whoop, it doesn't, so let's adjust it over a little bit. And there we go, that's how you add on the right, I mean the, the upper torso into the right position. So now let's find the head. Look at all those body parts. It's kind of morbid looking. Alright, there's the head. So let's throw it into the project. Let's make sure we attach it to the head bone. Head bones attached to the shoulder bone. All right, so there it is, attached to the head. Okay, so here we are, we have my nice blue shiny robot. But notice this, what's this? The clone bone hand doesn't actually fit too well with the model, but that's not a problem. Go to actor, choose skin, and then let's go down to the materials, and let's choose the upper body, and then go down to the opacity, and change the opacity of, this, of the bone to zero. That way the clone bone is still there, but now, ta-da, it's invisible. All right, so let's now move back and admire my beautiful robot. So cool. Okay, remember, now that we have a clone bone custom, we can also change the size, the body style to large, or we can actually manually scale them to a huge robot or scale them back down. But notice this, if I do it the same thing with the clone bot, Zach, do 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 do, ouch, that looks quite painful. Why is that happening? Well, let me show you why that happened. Remember, when you are attaching accessories onto the bones, you have the option to give these accessories certain inherent qualities. So we position Spider-Man's head onto the clone bone custom, and then notice down here we have the inherent abilities. For instance, with Clonebot Zack, we deselected the scale button so he will be always remain the same size. By selecting the box, you have the option to scale your clone bone characters. Okay, so here's my clone bone, my excuse me, my clone bone custom, and I want to show you how we can change the color of our clone bones. So I have the prop selected for the head, the accessory, and I go down to the materials and I select the material that I want to change. So we can always change the bump, the specular, or the glow or the reflection. So you can open up, add in a reflection, and there we have a reflection now. You can also change the diffuse and the ambient colors. Let's say make his diffuse red, and then we can change the ambient color to also red. And now we have a shiny red helmet. But say for instance I want his helmet to be a little bit more reflective, I can change the strength of it, make it more shiny, or I can make it less shiny, less reflective, and make the strength less. So that's my cool red helmet. All right, so I choose the stick man again, and then I can give him animation. So let's make him do some, what do you think? Hip hop, all right. And just like with Clone Bone Actor, we can give Clone Bone custom characters facial animation as well. Just attach an accessory to the jawbone found in the attachment dropdown menu, position the accessory, and give the character some facial animation. Hey, how's it going? I just found a new restaurant, and I heard it's great. Like with everything in iClone 3, your imagination is your only limitation. Feel free to experiment and try out some of your ideas. Share your techniques with other iCloners, and you can bring any story, or any character, to life. <laughs>